Realtors Talk. This is your community's podcast with conversations about real estate, local happenings, and all things Winchester, Virginia. I'm Mark Francis, a local realtor, broker, and owner at Icon Real Estate. And my name is Megan Eanes. I'm a realtor and part of the Icon Real Estate team. Mark and I are excited to share everything that we love about Winchester, Virginia with you, and we want you to be an informed, savvy real estate consumer in today's ever-changing market. Yep. If you want local knowledge, you've come to the right place. Well, Welcome back again. Thank so, you. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're still feeling a little raspy. Uh, this is going on for a little while, and I think it's just maybe the allergies at this point yeah, in time. Yeah, but... sure, of course. And there's stuff going on. Yep. But I feel great, though. You feel great. I feel great. Um, fall is here. It's my favorite time of year. Mm-hmm. Leaves have changed. My wife went out of town for a work conference for like just four days, and she came back. She's like, wow, it's, it's all of a sudden fall here. I feel like the, the leaf colors, and they change so quick right. that you just have to like pay attention to it. This is the season. Go out on like a drive. Go on a Sunday drive and cruise around. By the way, like my wife and I did that. Like during like shutdown and of COVID. Oh, okay. We we're like, we got to get out of the house. We like left our kids behind. We went up and down Skyline Drive, and in our convertible, which luckily we had a conver- we have right. a convertible, and you know it was one of those spring days. But I would say do that now. Well, we like, were so amazing. lucky to have the Skyline Drive just yeah. right down there, the entrance to it in yep. um, Front Royal. I and mean, it's just such a – it's gorgeous. We had and never done it t- before. This so is the time of year. It's the time of year to do it. Definitely go back and do it at this time of year with right. all the leaves and changing and things. Yep. Well, I had a very eventful week last week. I want to hear it. So got to go to Texas to see my son graduate from basic training. Yay. So that was really amazing. We got to hug him for the first time in seven and a half weeks and spend time with him on, uh, um, we were away from base on um, Town Pass on Wednesday. And Mm -hmm. then Thursday, we had to stay on base with him. And then um, Friday morning, he was off to his tech school and we were still there. So we went and checked out the Alamo and um, that was that was really cool. We When we were there three years ago, when my oldest graduated from basic training, um, we didn't do the Alamo. Uh-huh. And it was like, no, we're, you can't come to San Antonio right. and not see it. So. And you do the river walk also. Yep. We saw that we, we didn't necessarily do the walk because we had done that before. But, of course, you can still see it. And cool restaurants and yes. places to go and do. It was it was a really great experience. So we got back home on Saturday. And, and it was really neat. I noticed when we were flying back, my daughter had the window seat uh-huh. looking out the window that the it, Everything looked different than when we had left. <laughs> right. So it was yep. like they were, you know, more orange in the trees than anything else. So it was really, yep. it was a really great this experience. The, and coming place. home is always wonderful too. It's a place to be. Apple mm-hmm. season. I still haven't gone out and picked any apples. I don't, I think it might be past the point, but it's still a good time to go to the market. Right. To go That's do that. true. Yeah. Well, uh, this is no real good segue. I had a good week too. And it was an interesting week in many, many ways. So, we have our grandmother moving in with us, and that happened last week. Oh, right. So the process of renovating our basement to get it all fully prepared and ready for, we're calling it not even a basement, a senior suite, or even the queen suite is what oh, we're I calling like that. it now. Queen because suite. it is like a fully decked out, ADA accessible, one level living for her, and so she's the, loving it. the stair lift is now in. <laughs> Not yet. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is the big challenge on the table. Shh, keep that to ourselves. We don't want other our family members to think that we're like, um, you know, <laughs> going to cause my grandmother to fall downstairs. We go up and down with her very carefully, um, but she is spry and frisky and gets out there and it's like, you know, going to make sure she takes care of herself. Mm-hmm. But she's loving it. She's having a good time, and um, so that was my busy, busy moving week, and um, she settled in. But also, uh, from a work perspective, from real estate perspective, I was able to gather a few different listings, get new buyers. One of them was right across the street from me. So I have a neighborhood listing that's out there. And it made me remember, historically, I've flipped houses and I try to do things in my neighborhood as well, just kind of keep things up. It's the kind of house that could get flipped. It's the kind of house that has great bones, great structure to it has just some old dated features, but it's in a great location. And it made me think of my days when I did renovate a house or two in my neighborhood that looks like that. This one's a little bit above my price point of what mm-hmm. I would want to flip, though. Um, it's at 529 on Tennyson Avenue. And it's a great street. It's an amazing house. Um, and it made me think of the time where I fixed a house around the corner and I did an open house. And it, how fun that was because it was my neighborhood. And so I'm going to be doing an open house again this coming weekend. 
um, for this on house that on, property on Tennyson. Okay, and um, it made me think of my own like listing presentations that I give to people. Do open houses work? Like you know, we always say, okay, we should do open houses to promote the property. Right. And part of listing presentations of like, yes, this is the marketing strategy. We put it on social media. We do website stuff. We will make flyers. We'll sync it up to all the different public websites. We'll go ahead and let all of our partners in town know about it. And I'll send out flyers and email notifications and all kinds of just a big blitz. And I like to do marketing in phases. And then I'll always say, well, an open house I'll do in like the second or third weekend of it being on the market. So that's what I told my people this time, open house, will go on the second weekend of being the market. But I'm scratching my head thinking, okay, are they, are they worth it, mm-hmm. right? And what is it going to do for the for the listing? Am I going to get a buyer or, you know, how – am I just doing this because – is it I, is it something that's just been done that right. sellers kind of expect to be done, but is it really something that should continue to be done? So that's the question yeah. on the table. Question of the day. Open so houses. Open houses. Is it worth it or not? Um, so I'll let you give me your big picture take. What do you think in your experience of open houses? Open houses um, – I think they're more for the seller. I think the seller feels better and they feel like the agent is doing their job, so to speak, when they have an open house uh-huh. and that way people can come in. But honestly, it's I think it's less than one or two percent of open houses actually do sell from the from open, the open house. house. Now, personally, I yeah. like doing open houses. I okay. like doing them for other agents if they need the help, mm-hmm. for the, the assistance or on my own properties. But it's not so much to sell the home, mm-hmm. but it's beneficial for agents mm-hmm. for- to do them. So, all right. So now <laughs> so- I'm not going to have my my client listen to this podcast then because we're talking, <laughs> we're talking about how it's really meant for the agent and not for the seller. Is that- now it does have its positives. And from uh, the story that you were telling me about, something that you had done before, actually. I'll share the story. That that kind of changes my perspective a yeah. little bit. So I... I'm not able to do it for this particular listing because I had to list it so quick. But a couple years ago when I did renovate a house in the neighborhood and I was the owner and I had control of when I wanted to list it and sell it, I was able to partner with the neighbors in the neighborhood. And every, every little block in Winchester, at least I feel like, has a little neighborhood vibe. And my neighborhood and this other neighborhood around the corner, we do block parties once a year. Just something fun to do. Mm -hmm. You know, it depends on the time of year, when it is. But you get together as neighbors and you have a little cookout or something like that. Well, this particular neighborhood did that too or does that. And so they let me know that they have a contact list of people in the neighborhood. And every day I feel like when I was at that house flipping it or renovating it or meeting with contractors, there would be a neighbor walking by, walking their dog and – peering in and I would say, hey, I'm Mark. I'm the owner. I'm fixing it up. And they're, oh, so thankful that you're fixing up this house. You know, it's such an eyesore and we love that you're making the neighborhood better. So it gave me the idea of, well, if I had so many people walking by, they all want to see it. So I gave them a preview, open house, neighborhood block party a week before we went active when the house is already fixed up. And it was a Friday night, wine and cheese party. And I was able to have the neighbor contact that I knew that had the email threads for everybody send out an invitation. And they all, I mean, it was amazing how many people showed up. And I hardly knew any of them, but they were all interacting with with each other (laughs) because I'm throwing them a Friday night happy hour party. And they were able to see the house. And for me, I was able to connect with some of these neighbors. I was also able to glean two different clients out of it. One person said, hey, I've got an aunt and uncle that lives out in the county, and they're ready to sell their house, and they're just ready to dump it. They need somebody like you to fix it up and just help them with that. I said, great. Did that, and a year later was able to sell that house. Had another person show up and said, hey, I've got a, a, a friend. No, it wasn't a friend. This was a, a son who was going to be moving around, moving into the neighborhood. And he's like, I need your help to help him buy it. I'm like, great. I'll do it. So it benefited both. It mm-hmm. benefited the neighborhood. I didn't get a seller. I didn't get a buyer out of it, but I was I was able to glean some leads out of it. But it really was fun for the neighborhood. 
Right. And but you also have to wonder how many of those people actually came into the property that may have told someone else exactly. about it. And maybe that ended up being the buyer that you just don't yes. know. Right. Don't know. And none of the neighbors are going to buy the house. Correct. Actually, I take that back. The house that I'm listing right now across the street is truly a neighbor of mine right down the road who uh, was looking to have it be an investment and now they're ready to sell. So there are people in the neighborhood that might say, hey, I like my neighborhood. Maybe I can use it and use it as an investment. <laughs> so there's all kinds of possibilities of how an open house can lead to something. I'll give you a total side, no <laughs> side note, totally off topic, but I just it just made me think of it. It's really funny. So when we first moved to Winchester, we moved into Stonebrook. Um, my dad was with Rubbermaid. We got transferred to Illinois, moved away, came back, and we ended up having three homes in Stonebrook. Oh. That my family loved wow. it so much yeah. that they moved back to one and then a couple buying. years. And so I, it's not that shocking when people want to stay in the same neighborhood, mm -hmm. but just maybe want to change houses mm -hmm. a little bit. So. so I'll see how this coming open house goes. I'm going to allow another one of our icon agents to be there and be there with me um, to help just him see what open houses are mm -hmm. looking like and maybe help give him some clients and leads out of it. But the the overall goal, I'm with you. I think that open houses are for show, <laughs> yes. first and foremost, not truly to get and attract a real buyer. Now, I, I mean, there's been certain times of the year where open houses are successful. I think right now, peak season of fall, yes, peak season of spring, people are out and about. They're doing their, their Sunday drives. Mm -hmm. They're doing their Saturday outings or whatever. And like, hey. We're leaving a soccer game today. Let's go. There's an open house on. You want to go see a fancy, cool house up in, behind tennis, on Tennyson Avenue behind Hanley High School? Sure. Let's go do it. So I, there could be some successes because of when and the time of year that you do it. Oh, that's um, true, especially if it's uh, up in that location. As opposed mm -hmm. to cold of winter or heat of summer when you know, you're just doing it for show. So there have been – I can look back on the many times that I've had open houses – and they've been successful, and I've looking back, and I can say they were busts. And, and it, I think it, there's a, a certain kind of like uh, pattern you can look at with the time of year, the kind of house that you're promoting, the location of the house, the price of the house, and is it something that people want to go see? Um, so that's – we're not really giving you a lot of answers out here with this <laughs> conversation. Well, I do have some pros. Okay. So I'll just kind of give a little list give of a list. few of the pros that we've yep. seen. So. Um, I, I do love the first one. You can attract buyers who may not know how to start the home buying process. Yeah. So yep. they, the home buying process can seem very overwhelming if you don't know where to begin. So just by getting out and looking, then you can, you know, you can meet realtors. They can certainly help you with mm -hmm. the process, make the process feel more comfortable, and of course, get you in touch with the mortgage lender and, yep. and down that line. Um, of course, you do get additional exposure on your property to people yes. that may not have seen it. And maybe someone can go a little bit in their, um, higher in their price range than they had been, but they weren't looking. Yeah. So this might give them that exposure to see something and that decide to bump up into a different price that range. That is key. That I will attest to that. So that is a pro for the seller, the yes. owner of the yes, house. Yes, definitely. Because as a marketing person, I am looking for any opportunity to create touch points mm -hmm. with buyers out there. And if I did a first blitz of town of saying, here's a house in the market, then that the dust settles from that. That's why I like doing open houses week two or week three, because now I have another reason to send out information about that same house to the same group of people right. who might have seen it a week or two before. I'm going to now blitz them with another set of flyers and push notifications and emails and videos and you name it, all those things, another reason to – sell the or to, to get the house information mm -hmm. out there so that is a big pro i yeah. agree with that i mean there's sometimes there are people that have a certain price range and they want to stay on that lower end of it but they're not seeing what they really like so going to an open house they're like you know what mm -hmm. i may be qualified for this and this is worth putting the extra money in for yeah. the mortgage payment yep so that's a good reason um another one is buyers can look at their home without look at the home without feeling pressured mm -hmm. so they don't i mean as i know how you work and how i work mm -hmm. i don't pressure my clients right. 
at all. You know, you look at it, you tell me what you like. I might remind you mm -hmm. that, yes, this house had the A, B, and C that you were looking for, and then that's it. Yep. You know, I let my clients certainly make their own decisions. But some clients, I think some buyers might feel pressured, so it's a good way to get into a property, take a look at it without feeling like you've got an agent there watching yep. you or right. anything else. And right. then, um, of course, the pros for us as real estate agents mm -hmm. is – you can have buyers coming in that are coming into your open house that you're yeah. presenting and they don't have an agent. Right. And they, you're the first one that they get to talk to. You can build a relationship from the get go. And then they decide, yeah, I'm ready to buy. And so who do they call? Hopefully it's going to be you. Yeah. So it's a good way as the, um, you know, the listing agent to yep. be able to potentially get. And it's not agent. much of a pro for the seller, but right. it's no. for just the idea of doing it for marketing. Correct. Now, here's I've got a list of cons for okay. you because I guess maybe I'm always kind of looking at the reality of it all. But it, it, you're really not going to. It's a super small percentage. I think you even gave it of mm -hmm. like a one or two percent right. um, opportunity for the buyer who is going to buy the house comes from an open house. So very small percentage of that. The other thing is that you're going to get a lot of unqualified people that show up. Um, like you said, just somebody who's just starting out with the process, mm -hmm. not even understanding how it works or what they might be qualified for. They're just like, I think I want to go buy a house you know, this year. So I'm going to go look around in open houses and get a feel of the market. Great. Okay, that works. But are you really going to be able to afford a $529,000 house when right. you're walking into it? Right. They might end up going to talk to their mortgage lender and, oh, you're at three hundred. Yeah. So not truly qualified. So it's just you, as an agent, you might be able to grab them as a client. Mm -hmm. But you're not really helping promote selling that specific house um, because of that. And then and the con of where I was even going with the neighbors in the neighborhood, you're going to get the nosy neighbors that just pop in. Right. <laughs> right? I've always wanted to like, see what the inside of this house you... look like. Right. And they're not really going to buy the no. house. They're just nosy. Now, okay, there's no harm in that. But y are you really helping sell the house because you're letting neighbors see it? Maybe, maybe not. But well, there's the, you can also look at the other side of that, too, because sometimes when you've got more traffic through the property and people see more traffic mm -hmm. going in, mm -hmm. then that might entice them to stop and go look at the property yeah. as well. So yeah. those nosy neighbors can help with the flow of traffic a little yeah. bit. So maybe that's you know another way to look at it. And then you have the doors wide open. Anybody can come and go. And, you know, if your stuff is there, you know, an agent's going to be watching. But a lot of times when you show a house, you're represented by somebody who is an agent who has the the ethics and the code of ethics that you're looking Correct. to adhere to. So just random people coming and going. If it's a vacant house, that's one thing. But if it's somebody's house that you're living in, always make sure that like an agent is there representing the seller to like just be aware of who's coming and going. And not to try to have a whole bunch of people throughout the house in different rooms so that right. as the agent, you can't keep track of who's in what room to yeah. be able to, you know, help keep track of the seller stuff. So right. being a little more organized as the agent with, yeah. you know, even giving tours of the home yeah. um, just helps protect the seller's belongings also. Right. So as I'm looking and listening to you giving the pros and I'm giving the cons and I'm almost convincing myself, I think it is worth it. I, mm -hmm. I think the pros and the benefits are outweighing on that seesaw of putting on the scales there. There, the, the, the pros to me make sense. Even if it's not a direct sell, the indirect potential is there. Right. I mean, you're... It's just true. This, the percentage is just too small to tell your sellers, okay, we're going to do an open house and we're going to sell your house yeah. from this open house. That's yep. just unrealistic. It yep. really is. But there's so much more exposure that that home can get. And mm -hmm. who knows? Like I said, someone that saw it can tell a friend or a family member. And then, you know, yep. you just never know. So that yep. I I personally, I I would do it. Now, next level of okay. open houses are, there's two next levels. One is a broker's open house. And this is something that is not as common, but around here, pre-COVID. Right. It's not there, as common anymore. There right. definitely was a, an attraction that to do an open house in the middle of the week on like a Tuesday or Wednesday. Around here in Winchester, Wednesday was the big day. Mm -hmm. You would do a broker's open house, not necessarily meant to be for the public. So we were not promoting it for the open public. We'd be promoting it amongst other real estate agencies in town. And if you were an agent you would come to see the house. Even if you didn't have a specific person with an appointment that day, you would just peruse the house, get a feel for the neighborhood, get a feel for what it looks like. And then if you did have a buyer, or if you think you might be getting a buyer, you've seen the house and the price and the location. That's popular because you would give people food. Right, <laughs> agents give, love free food. You would give people... <laughs> 
prizes. And so as the listing agent promoting the broker's open house, you're doing anything you can to attract your buddies, your other agents mm-hmm. in town to come look at it. And um, it would create a little bit of a buzz that way. And, and a lot of them were co-hosted. So you could yes. have it with an agent and a lender. That's so they my would... part, too. Yep. They're Sorry, reading I... my look, mind. Look yes. how, how well we work together. Yes. So then you, of course, got the, you know, the lender there as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you get the enticing of the agents in there with, like I said, <laughs> the free food and the, yeah. the potential for a gift card to a restaurant or whatever it might be. But, but even partnering yep. with a lender is I think really, really valuable because they have a whole set of different contacts Mm -hmm. and people who are out there who are feeling out the process and are doing it properly. And us agents might not know who those buyers are yet. And the lenders do. The lenders have their own pool of contacts, their own database like a realtor does, and they can promote it to the general public as well. So there's a huge benefit of doubling your efforts of your marketing and trying to have other business partners like a lender um, to jump on the bandwagon with an open house to try to help promote it. Yeah, you might not get the buyer, but you're going to be getting more touch points out there to the general public and the general community that your house is for sale and it's an amazing place. And the more touch points of marketing, the better off you are. Now, I have sold houses from Brokers Opens really? before. Because, and even personally speaking, yep. we can talk to our clients and our buyers about other homes that we've seen. Or, you know, here's a property. You might love this. This has got blah, blah, you know, A, B, and C to it. You're mm-hmm. gonna, It's great. We can tell them that based upon what we've seen from the listing, which they have the same information that we do. It's completely different when you actually step foot into that property and you see it. Because sometimes the pictures aren't very good. And then when you go in, you're like, oh, this is what it looks like. Mm -hmm. I do have a client that would love this property. So actually Mm -hmm. getting into that home to be able to tell your clients personally, I saw this, is huge. Yeah. Yeah. The benefits of it... uh are now tipping the scales. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm getting more and more convinced, you know, of <laughs> the potential pessimism of like, eh, we're not going to get the right person or not. But it's it's definitely a positive thing, especially in this time of year. So maybe I'll report back to you of how this right. weekend That'd goes. That'd be great to see what, especially what kind of traffic is, you get. Yeah, and... because it is the neighborhood vibe that we're going for. Oh, I remembered something. Yeah. Probably my favorite thing about an open house. So the best thing to do when you have either a broker's open or an open house is to ask the people that are coming through the property for feedback. Yep, right. Because you could have a listing that you've been trying to talk your clients into reducing the price, Mm -hmm. or you told them that maybe they should paint because their colors are a little wild Mm -hmm. and they're completely against it. They don't want to. But it's completely different when you have that feedback from people that are coming into the property yeah. and you can say, look, I talked to, you know, six agents that showed the property yeah. or came into the property for a broker's open. They all said it was overpriced yeah. um, or that this room needs to be painted, whatever it could be. Or you even get that, um, you know, they can come in and tell you, no, we're priced right. The yeah. price is great. Just We just need to wait for the right buyer to yep. come along. So, so I mean, you're so feedback. positive today. You, you did come in saying you're happy. You're, I got a hug and, from my son. See, so. and I. <laughs> I'm looking, at that, <laughs> I'm looking at that as a negative of like, oh my gosh, I hate people's feedback because oh, love it. you can get feedback and it can just drive a seller crazy. And and so too much feedback or feedback that's a little too generic or just like, oh, I don't like the color of paint or oh, I don't like that sink faucet or oh, I think you could have done a different light fixture. and All these other things will make a seller go nuts because they're chasing their tail mm-hmm. trying to follow feedback from people that may or may not be valid and all feedback that's a cosmetic like kind of feedback means is it's overpriced i mean that ultimately whenever you get feedback like that i'm just going to tell my clients right. like they're basically saying they don't like the design and the style based off the price if it's a kind of price point they're like oh we can fix those things then it's right so i i'm see now i'm a neg- i'm negative on feedback from no, that standpoint no no and, and even if so um just even this week so i had a and and i won't call it an issue but i have a problem child dealing with 
a situation, and I knew the answer to the question, but I still texted you while I was gone in Texas, asked you the question, of course. Yep. which you responded. Problem with, child isn't problem client. Yeah, or, not like, the client. It's client's yeah, yeah. great. I love the client. Um, the transaction. The transaction. Problem transaction, we'll just say. Um, so I, I texted you the question. You gave me the response, which was exactly what I said. I, I knew what the answer was going to be, but it's just that it's completely different, and you get a little bit more backing yes. when you can tell someone. Yes. I like I I this is what I've been saying, but this is also what I you know my broker says this and confirming what you said is true. So I when agree you with that. Get that feedback. The validation of what you've been telling the client the yes. whole time. So it's not just you can tell them something, and sometimes they listen, sometimes they don't. But like you said, when you can get validated by feedback, and you yeah. can say this says this, this, and this to back up what I have been saying to you, yeah. to me that is huge. Yeah. Well, I hope we haven't gotten too much in the weeds of open house conversation because here we are, you know, looking at it from a real estate agent's perspective. Mm -hmm. So from your perspective, the listening audience who are looking to sell a house or even buy a house, think of it from that perspective of if I'm listing, if I'm trying to sell a house, my agent is going to do an open house or I'm asking the agent to do an open house, have the proper expectations. If you're looking to buy a house, mm -hmm. feel free to go shop around and buy a house, but make sure you're pre-qualified and make sure you let your agent know when you're going to do that because it's perfectly fine to go look around. Um, and if you find the right house when you're shopping in an open house, that's amazing. But give yourself some just proper expectations from either the seller side or a buyer side when you're dealing with open houses. And I would just add in there too, if you are going to go out as a buyer looking at open houses and you are working with a realtor that you have a relationship with, when you go in and look at these properties and the the, the listing agent or whoever's hosting the open house, just let them know yep. that you're already working with an agent. It's important to know yes, that. And, and not everybody understands that etiquette, which is fair and it's okay but just the more you understand our world of a mm -hmm. real estate real estate real estate agent then it, it's no harm no foul right so um well that was that was enlightening to me even right now of my preparation for, for an open house this week so i'll let my client know all the fun tips that we're going to be doing to make sure we uh gain some leads. Well, so. I'll tell you what you I didn't even think about even when we started this whole conversation was about brokers opens and I just realized that I kind of miss them. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's been start them up again. Two and a half years, yep. I guess, since we we had any, but those are I think those are beneficial also for getting the property sold too. Yep. Oh, there's definitely a circuit mm -hmm. of agents who went around and got their lunch, their their appetizers, their lunch and their desserts and their drinks all on the same day at four different open houses, <laughs> right. you know. <laughs> I think I've won a gas card here and there. Yeah. Well, <laughs> over over 20 years of brokers <laughs> opens. Oh, uh, that's awesome. Well, we are coming up on another weekend and another weekend in Winchester means mm -hmm. Activities. Um, yep. Local events coming up for this weekend. We have the Valley Glass Hoppers. It's the fall glass show and sale, which actually sounds really kind of neat. Cool. October 21st from 5 to 9 and the 22nd from 10 to 3. Mm -hmm. It's on Opecan Avenue in Winchester. More than 100 tables of American glassware will be offered, and it's $5 donation at the door. Awesome. Um, but there's also going to be an oyster dinner Saturday, October 22nd, Star Tannery Volunteer Fire Department. Wow. Get your choice of fried chicken for $15 or fried oysters for 18 Cool. Um, and then there's a Christmas bazaar. <laughs> Christmas in Is October. It Chris? Uh, wow. I'm ready for Halloween well, and a Thanksgiving. Bazaar, and a bazaar means it's like a crafts, a crafts yes. kind of thing. So. Go. Christmas Bazaar. Get your crafts. Mm -hmm. yep. Saturday, October 22nd from 9 to 1 at the Greenwood Volunteer Fire and Rescue. Okay. Um, they're going to have breakfast from 9 to 11 and lunch from 11 to 1. You can order soup and um, have chicken salad, ham salad. Yep. And there's going to have all kinds of uh, selling vendor spaces. So cool. Lots of vendors and crafts there at the Greenwood Fire Department. Yep. So that's Love what's it. going on this awesome. weekend. Well, the other thing that's going on this weekend, and this is for me, is... The cross country season around here is nearing an end, and it's the district race out there at Millbrook. How um, exciting! Well, not Millbrook, but it's the uh, what's that third battle? Third field? battle, of, yeah. Third, third, third battle, battle of Winchester. Winchester, that area. So that's where I'll be on Saturday morning. So things have heated up. You know, uh, months ago we interviewed um, Mark Stickley, who's the coach of Hanley. Mm -hmm. Recently, also a couple months ago, we were able to interview Matt Lofton, who's the coach of James Wood. Mm -hmm. There's the rivalry going on. So good luck to the teams out there of uh, the race. And hopefully as those teams progress, we'll get to regionals and then states and we'll see what happens. So oh, That'll be exciting. Well, good luck yep. to all the teams competing in Absolutely. our district this weekend. We'll be 
excited to see what happens. Mm-hmm. So I'm not, I've never really been a running kind of fan, but now I am, you know? So you're, you're, you're a swimmer and you're mm-hmm. in the swimming crowd. I'm now in the running crowd. So, well, here we go. Well, mm-hmm. thanks guys for joining us once again on this episode of Iconic Talk. And we hope you've learned something from today's episode and look forward to sharing more with you next week. Remember when you're looking for a real estate professional, make sure they're experienced innovative, personal, dedicated, and available. We appreciate you spending some of your valuable time with us. And if you have a moment, we'd love if you would leave us a rating and review. If you're enjoying listening, take a moment to subscribe or share this podcast with your friends. Yep. And once again, thanks to our editor extraordinaire, Simi Battaglia. Until next time, think iconic. Iconic.